Uh, just here to give you a quick announcement before the show starts. This is going to be a good show. Uh, hold on to your boots and hope you brought your screaming clothes tonight. Uh, so we've been airing the show a bit late, past couple of weeks, months maybe. We're having a national issue that you are very aware of. Uh, Lord shedding power is barely available. We now have about four hours of power every day, even though Zesco is telling us they're giving us 12 hours of, of load shedding, but that's not what we're, uh, I'm here to say, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell and share. And quick announcement, we're going to move the show to 22 hours instead of 20 hours. And we're going to provide the podcast to you at 20 hours instead. So you have the audio at 20 hours and the video at 22 hours, but we're going to tell you once we implement that, which should be next week or the other week, we'll let you know. Uh, also, Monday show is not Monday show because it airs on Monday, but that's the name of the segment, the political segment. And so from now on, expect two shows, Monday show and Bible talks on any respective day of the week until we have a hold of this thing and then we'll give you specific days. But for now, enjoy the show and see you on the other side. Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple, and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. Welcome to Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe, hit the bell and share. Show is available on Mondays. Ah, we have Monday show and Bible Talks. We air them on any days, respectively, <laughs> during the week, <laughs> two days a week. <laughs> and due for that notice, I'm here with Mr. Jafaya. Himself. How are you doing, sir? I'm, uh, I'm fired up. Fired up? Yeah. Ready for the show? I was born ready. You were born ready, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have a couple of things to discuss on the show today. Not too much chit-chat. Uh, to begin with, we're discussing the tragedy in Malawi as they lost their vice president in a plane crash. And then we'll go on to twist and turns in the Emmanuel J.J. Banda alleged abduction case. Uh, then Zesco says number of load shedding hours will not reduce. No news there. And Edgar Lungu's eligibility case reignited. Yeah, so that's what we have to discuss on the show today. Um Interesting stuff that happened last week. The president, vice president rather, of Malawi passed away in a plane crash. Oh, I'm trying to organize my... Yeah, passed away in a plane crash, which claimed the life of not him alone, but nine others as well. What started out as a trip to Mzuzu from one... Um, from Lilongwe. From Lilongwe um, ended in miscommunication or rather a break in communication with those on the ground once they took off and uh, this was after they told them that there was bad weather and they were instructed to fly back to Lilongwe instead of landing in Muzuzu. Eventually they lost communication and then uh, a search crew was sent out. The government of Malawi was giving us updates every uh, couple of hours and eventually we were told that the people on board had passed away and the plane had crashed. Um, in the collaborative efforts, um, we also saw Zambia step in to uh, the same issue by sending a ZAF aircraft to go and help with the retrieval of bodies. Yeah, uh, to something repatriate that, the bodies. Exactly. Yeah. Something that uh, uh, Mr. Chafai is very happy about. 
given his Malawi roots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. I was very saddened by the news. I was shocked even. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But as you are saying, yeah, to see the this uh, brotherly love, or is it bromance? Be- being displayed. Yeah. yeah. Being displayed. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a good thing because it shows that, uh, you know, we're not just mourning with you on social media. No. Yeah. We are actually there with you. Yeah, so kudos to our president as well for acting very swiftly and also our, our Air Force as well. Yeah. Yeah, kudos to them. And uh, I hope that we keep this going. And uh, my, my my thoughts and prayers are with uh, my brothers and sisters in Malawi. Yeah, very uh, it's sad. It's a very trying time because yes, the guy yes. was uh, a leader that people looked up to. He yeah. Was, uh, most people say he was going to be Malawi's next president. Yeah. Yeah, and because they were in, a, in an agreement with uh, Chakwera. To say his second, the second time is the second time is for him. Okay. Yeah. So kind of what we had in uh, UDA. Do you remember the alliance we had UDA between yeah. Sata and uh, yeah, and HH? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The agreement was that one would start as vice and the other would. Okay. Was Sata in UDA? Yeah, I believe it was Sata and no. HH. Oh, it wasn't. No, that was not part of them. No, 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 no. no. Actually, it was yeah. other parties. Yes. That were trying to match up to the size of PF at the time. Someone as yes. as a as a yes. as an opposition. Yes. Sata mm. and the HH almost uh, were in a pact, but it's because of the same thing to say who's going to be the fire. Yeah, vice that's why. Yeah. That's how they fell out. A story that KBF really loves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever he has anything negative to say about HH. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a really sad thing. We saw the president of Iran recently pass away in a plane crash as well. So this is a bit alarming. It's not very common to hear that a president or world leader has passed mm. away. Yeah. And yeah. this is quite yeah. unfortunate. But also Chakwera was moving in Edonia, an odd aircraft. 85. Yeah. Um, Saulo sorry. Chilima. Yeah. What did I say? Chakwera? Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. I meant to say Saulo Chilima. Yeah. Yeah. He was moving in a Donia, a 35 year old aircraft. Mm, that's quite old. Aircraft with propellers outside. Oh, oh. Yeah. So you see, these are one of the Vice things. president. Hmm? Yes. Vice president. Yes. Oh, crazy. These are one of the things that show you that living in a poor country is very bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because some of these things can be avoided. I mean, yeah. Uh, embattled Petauke lawmaker, uh, Emmanuel J.J. Banda, I don't know why they call him lawmaker here, a member of parliament. Um, has, Isn't he a lawmaker? Uh, yeah, well, he's a, he's a lawmaker. I just, I don't know, there are certain words, it's like the way you feel about honorable. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's like uh, lawmaker going to, to me, honor, lawmaker honor. going to police, threatened to burn down. Uh. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh, he has mentioned a couple of people from uh, state house, or rather, people in high ranking positions, uh, as having been involved in his abduction, which he came out with with no bruises except. Yeah, dehydration. Yeah, so among okay. the people he has mentioned is Clay. Uh, Clay Hamasaka, he's mentioned Clayson. Levy, mm. Clayson Hamasaka rather, he's mentioned Levy Ngoma and Trevor Mwinde as being uh, the individuals that kidnapped him. We are surprised that we have not seen any arrests yet, even though these claims that na- names have been mentioned. And uh, that's a surprising fact to me that we have not seen any form of arrests, any form of real leads. Um, even the people that are being mentioned are suing him back for defamation. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't know what you think about the case. Do you think there is any val- validity to the abduction to begin with? Uh, well, I didn't buy it at our place. Me in my house, we didn't buy yeah, it. Yeah, you and your household. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't buy it. Uh, but also, I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, because there was a story in the Daily Nation where he, I don't know, maybe you can play Makebi Zulu first. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Makebi Zulu uh, had this to say. Are you able to state the names of those who have been named? The people that have been named are Hamasaka, Trevor uh, Munde, as well as uh, Mr. Levin Goma. Those are the people that have been named. This lead having been given to the police, they should be able to follow that lead. They should be able to follow that lead. We expect them to ensure that there's justice for, uh, for, for JJ. You may be aware that the time that he was um, being interrogated, or the time he was being asked about his abduction, he was explaining to a group of 12 police officers, at least 12 police officers, some of whom refused to uh, to, to, to give their details, to introduce themselves. 
Then when he was asked if he knew the abductors, he said he knew the abductors. So as Mike Bizul is saying, uh, there were 12 police officers when he was being questioned, mm. when he mm. mentioned these things. Mm. And then we also saw a story in the Daily Nation, which explained, or which was like a narration of what really happened. So JJ was saying, uh, so they were trailing him that day. Yeah. Around zero one. They followed him. He noticed. He took some turns. Mm. And then another car came. So there were two vehicles following him. And then they blocked him. So there were two vehicles in front and behind. Mm. So they managed to stop him. Then they, he, he refused to open the door. Then they started hitting the, the is it windshield? Mm. Yeah, the windscreen until they broke it. Although I can't get the part where, because they didn't break it, like, you know, until they getting didn't Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like break shattering it. Yeah. So I'm not getting the, the connection between them not managing to break it completely and then having access to him. Yeah. And then they started hitting him. They bundled. So they came out with guns. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, he said about eight people mm. came out with guns. So they beat him up and then they bundled him into a trunk of a vehicle, drove him around for some three hours. I don't know how, how he managed to calculate that. Mm. Uh, then he was taken to a place. In that place, time time, these guys showed up now. That's when Trevor Mwinde came in, Clayson Hamasaka, who's the, 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 the president's aide for press. Mm. They call him communication specialist. Mm. Then also Levin Goma, who's the political advisor to the president. So these guys came in and then they started questioning him about a Mr. Nyambe. I think so. Mm. And also some of his activities with the, his movements with the Edgar Lowe. ACL. Mm. ACL, yeah. So apparently they started beating him up and he didn't want to review the, to release the information. So they started beating him up. They squeezed his genitals, mm. apparently. Mm. They tried to pull out his tongue. Mm. Yeah, with the pliers. Uh, all these people, were, all these things were being ordered by Trevor Mwinde, Clayson Hamasaka, and uh, living home, according yeah. to Jay. Yeah, you know, there are two questions I have from what you've narrated so far. Yes. Number one, at what point did he have time to write a letter to the nation and not his three families, the ones we know? Um, secondly, or was it maybe when they were shattering the screen that he was like, yeah, dear Zambia, <laughs> forgive me. Forgive you for what? What I are we forgiving you for? For being ad abducted? <laughs> I don't know. I think the insinuation is that they... <laughs> that they planted the... Are, yes. <laughs> yeah, then secondly, how is he able to request Nando's in the hospital if they wanted to cut out his tongue? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know, yeah. yeah it's interesting, but, but he's been in and school, out of yeah, hospital. The speaker went to see him, Yama setting. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The speaker went to see him. So <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he told us he wants Nando's. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Allegedly. He's been in and out of office. Of hospital? Yes. Of, <laughs> you know, He's right? been in and out of hospital. Yeah, no, yeah. no, even a headache is a sickness. Guy, you yeah. know these things keep up appearances. Yeah, and also there's another case that has come up. Yeah, they are calling out a 2017 case yeah. of attempted murder. Okay, that happened in Eastern Province. Uh, JJ is the accused. Yes. But apparently that case was done out. With, but I don't know why they're bringing it up. Yeah, again. no, let them bring up that police issue. No. And then there was okay. another thing. Mm -hmm. uh, also, he's been reported as well. So he's going to be arrested again for defamation and other stuff. Oh, things. wow. With all the body pains he has. Apparently, after he ate the Nando's that the speaker brought, he mm -hmm. was like, yeah, I should have my body pains, but if not, yeah. <laughs> Actually, when I saw that picture of the, 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 the speaker and him, yeah. I thought of you, you know? Yeah. The facial, his facial expression. <laughs> yeah, his facial expression was like, oh, at least, Mbirako at least. <laughs> what do people mean when they say Mbirako at least or Ndeo for Mobidi? How does the body feel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on, Zesco has has assured us that they are not reducing their 12 hours of load shedding, which is not 12 hours, by the way. Um, Zambia's current electricity situation demands 12 hours of load management to prevent the water from running out. According to Zesco Managing Director, Victor Mapani, the 12 hour load shedding schedule will continue. It's 20 hours. Correction, Mr. Mapani, 12 plus eight is 20 hours. Uh, it is you, sir, who gave us the millimeter analogy and told us how we needed eight hours of load shedding for the whole year. But surprisingly, you've come out with the same smile, very confidently saying, 
It's two hours. Uh, we, we, we are not going to reduce it from two hours. Let's see the video. Yeah, we are not going to reduce from two hours. It's it's my, my and he's always vibrant. My friends, it's twelve hours. We are not going to reduce it. We need it. I don't use the wrong word. This is twelve. It's not going to change. Yeah, well, it's not it's, it's not going to change. Forget about changes. Like you are saying, accept accept the upward movement. Hey, it's, be it's, it's it's better more if you accept. <laughs> but honestly speaking, guys, it's not 12 hours, but listen to what he said. Number of hours will not change. It is what has been calculated. That's what, what it is. It includes all those factors, the imports, load shedding, the growing back of power, and the actual load management in some areas. That we are going to actually enhance communication. If we do have a challenge, we should be able to come beforehand to explain to you why you're not getting your power in time. Yeah, so that was Mr. Mapani assuring us again that uh, no changes to be expected. Uh, what now we, you're calling them changes. <laughs> I know, right? So what we can expect is that uh, we're not going to have anything below 12 hours. Since they have told us that what they're giving us is 12 hours, what we can take that as is a minimum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said it won't change, so it's the maximum. As well. is, is, no, but we are having 20 hours currently. Oh, yeah. Uh, unless you guys are having uh, no, no, no. Uh, eight hours no, that no, no. we get your location, send to Zesco, hours. unless you're having more than... So actually, uh, we had 22 hours last time, like on a... what It was a Sunday, I think. Yeah, you, you, you had 22 Saturday hours Sunday, 22 yeah. hours of load shedding, right? Yeah, my light around 10 hours, and then yeah, yeah, so, the next day, eight hours. So I don't know how that is 12 hours to begin with, number one. Number two, there was that issue of them saying that uh, sometimes... It's the power comes is restored late because mm. the person who's supposed to switch on had a flat tire. Yes, so or, there you have it. I know, but do you, who has a two an eight hour flat tire or an eight hour breakdown? That just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> yeah. The news, the tabloids went to town with it the next day after he said it. Yeah. Yeah. What were they saying? No, they were just putting headlines to say sometimes the delay in the restoration <laughs> of power is because of a flat tire. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the Minister of en Energy as well, almost like education, Minister of Energy as well, mm. um, made his remarks on the said issue. 105 megawatt dollar energy power plant. Currently, the ministry, Zesco and Dollar Energy Company Limited, is undertaking negotiations with a view to restarting the power plant by July 2024. Development of a 100 megawatt solar PV power plant in Chisamba. Erecting 120 megawatt of diesel generators in Indola and Impika. Well, it's, it's uh, I don't know. To me, it doesn't give me any any kind of any hope. consolation, eh? Yeah, any yeah. kind of hope. Yeah. So, so they, they are, they're uh, trying to like a kind of crowdfund now. Yeah, so they are saying that. Uh, so one thing is uh, the which I think he didn't say in this clip that we've played mm. is that they they um, what the, what are they calling it open power what what mm. where anyone can supply to the national grid. Okay. So you've got some solar panels, you've got excess energy, you can supply to the to the grid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then they are saying about opening up uh, dollar energy as well. I didn't know that it was actually closed. Dollar energy is function. different from CEC. From CEC. Yeah, it's different. Okay. Yeah, and dollar energy is something else. Then he spoke about uh, my, son, my, my solar plants that they are opening up. Mm. Yeah. I just wonder where my solar, why, why, why are we starting firefighting? We couldn't do some of this thing? 60 years later. After independence, 60 years after independence. No wonder last time I was mentioning that we've had party after party, party after party. <laughs> uh, and each government that comes in has not dealt with this issue. This government also had a lot of suggestions while they were in opposition. Mr. Mm. Nkombo told the floor of parliament, on the floor of parliament, told us how they'll create a canal. From Kembe. Uh, exactly. Kembe which we have not seen happen by now. By the way, Mr. Nkombo is not qualified to tell us about that. He, yeah, he studied, he edu saying that studied education and not... Yeah, but he was saying that on the floor of parliament, which he is qualified for. Yes, he's he's qualified to With speak. A straight no, face. having a platform does not qualify someone to say what they're saying on the platform. And sometimes, <laughs> that's why we here sometimes say, oh, we are not qualified. Uh, you say that a lot. I just <laughs> shoot. <Really? laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we don't know where all those suggestions went. The president himself had a lot of suggestions while he was in the opposition. What happened to six hours? Immediately we have the first uh, six o'clock. Ah, in fact, don't preempt you, it. Six <laughs> o'clock. You turn off the Kariba now or you turn on the turbines and then shine, shine. Uh, it's booky, it's, it's crazy. So yeah, we don't know what we are going to expect 
should we have any drought again hey, mm-hmm. ha, yeah so anyway um the case of mr edgar lungo has been uh, is being reignited so to say um a petition tells the court that the decision made on his eligibility in 2021 was um wrong and so they are trying to rehear or re restart the case yeah. uh which i don't know whether it qualifies to be uh, considered do- double jeopardy i know someone mentioned mm. i think from the from the lawyers last time who mm. defended mr lungu they said mm. that to reopen this is to re litigate the case yes exactly yeah, yeah. so that's what makebizulu said oh it was makebizulu actually yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. so uh we don't know of of course i don't know whether he's eligible even for 2026 but this case has always been for me it's kind of been kept behind the closet but if he was eligible in 2021 uh, what would stop him from 2026 then wouldn't he have been voted twice already for his own terms so then we're saying he was not eligible in 2021 is that what you're saying how many times have we voted for mr longo for his own term Just, Just once, once, eh? Yeah. Or oh, the other time. Oh, okay. No, I get it. I get it. I actually thought we voted for him twice. No. Uh, no, my we, friend, there wouldn't be a question if it was like yeah, that. The constitution yeah. is clear about that. But though he's been sworn in twice, yes. uh, and the previous constitution before the 2026 yes. amendment mm-hmm. under which he served 2016. Oh yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. Under 2016 amendment under which he served the previous one mm-hmm. stated that if someone has been sworn in twice, mm-hmm. then they can't be sworn in again, right? Mm-hmm. And that has been the argument. Mm-hmm. Actually the, there was an argument already in the constitutional court you already know mm. that they they said is eligible so to say although the question before the constitutional court was not per se if he is eligible for the constitutional court to say if he is eligible or not they were meant to to give the answer to the question which constitution they'll be using exactly mm. yeah so which of which they said after their their judgment he was eligible to stand again yeah, yeah it, it kind of taken. it kind of does make sense because if he's standing under mm-hmm. now this new constitution then they'll have to follow this mm-hmm. i think it kind of does make sense by the way he had a multitude thronging <laughs> the courts uh, wanting to take down the fence uh, as you can see in this video here Yeah so you know if this this if they are now I'm not talking about the crowd yeah. if this petitioner is yeah. uh, sort of being influenced or this petition is being influenced by the UPND mm. uh, then they've really failed yeah because we kicked out Ed Galungu resoundingly <laughs> so if you are now afraid and you want to curtail his very candidature it mm. means that uh, could be very important yeah that's if they are the ones responsible for it but also yeah. it could be a smart move if they are trying to kick him out legally rather than what he did by putting so his friend why in the cell want to do that rather than uh, removing his friend from the ballot or mm. let's not say that yeah let me just um, hold on for a bit calm down and say yeah, the right things lest no? lest uh, Chofia be the one hosting the show next week <laughs> telling you about how <laughs> hey, Lusaka podcast. You, yeah, you need to what began as a normal day for Lusaka podcast. <laughs> yeah, so um yeah, he put his friend in cells, slapped him with treason charges for over 100 days. I think this is a better approach if at all what he did was trying to get the opposition out of the way and this is what they are also trying to do, then at least they're doing it legally. Mm. Does it make sense? <laughs> I, you see to me the the very reason why you wouldn't want your your person to st- your your opponent to stand mm. already that is questionable to me yeah so yeah. how you do it 
does not really it matters but uh, to me what the i means, look at the means do not justify the ends yes like in school they used to tell us you know sometimes they'll give you a question quadratic equations or something mm-hmm. you come up with the answer you just say negative five because mm-hmm. you saw it maybe from you <laughs> x is equal to negative five and then they give you two marks out of 12 because they say no we didn't see the method yeah by the <laughs> way by the time i was in grade 11 when i was doing additional mathematics they would give you zero for that Oh, they'll give you zero for that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I think they would give. <laughs> we had a math lecturer in uni who was so excited when you get an, it's wrong, it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, so the very fact that you're trying to hinder your, your friend from standing, uh, to me, it shows that there's something you didn't do right. Yeah, mm. yeah, or maybe they're just playing politics. It means there's something. They That's if right. they're the ones who are. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, we should mention that. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, to leave you guys, I know Chofia can't believe we've come to the end of the show. But to- <laughs> <laughs> also before we go, maybe I should say this: press that subscription but subscribe button, ping the notification bell, and like the video, so yeah. that you see more of it and more people see it. Yes, yes. Uh, to leave you guys, uh, we're going to just give you a reminder of what the president suggested. His solutions. To Lord Shedding while he was in the opposition, just so you can refresh your mind. You know, lately we've been going through his archives <laughs> to just see how well he's doing. So once six again, o'clock. <laughs> six o'clock and whatnot. So once again, the, first time. the show airs twice a week, Monday show and Bible talks for now. When's the show is coming back very soon. But while we are still in this phase, uh, the show airs twice a week, not on Monday and Friday specifically. They could air on any days, but still Monday show and Bible talks. Yeah, we'll definitely see you on the next one. And we'd like you to enjoy this video as you um, remember. Uh, I think you gave a suggestion of how to listen to the video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just close your eyes and pretend as if HH is speaking against his own government. Mm. Try to create that illusion. It sounds very funny. <laughs> yeah, and probably there. Yeah, if there's anyone from the government watching this, you can get one or two lessons from what the president said. Exactly. <laughs> See you guys on the, ne- <laughs> on the next one. Bye bye. Why we have no electricity is not because there is uh, no rain here. Yes, there's no rain. Yes, the Kariba Dam levels are low. But if we had brought in the solar option, like we are talking about every day, we would be generating solar power in the day we would then close the turbines in kariba during the day conserve the water to build the dam levels up and only generate as the solar through lighting power goes down then automatically we begin to switch on the hydro turbines and by morning early in the morning six o'clock as the first light comes you switch off the turbines at Kariba North Bank and the solar kicks in. There is the solution. Someone says, where's the money? There is the money. From the presidential jet, from the corruption and the dollar, Lusaka Highway. If you add ambulance, you add... Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.